welcome back. So this will be the first video in our kind of new ramp up of video production. We're going to start making hopefully two videos a week. Uh, hopefully everyone saw the 200 subscriber update video we put out. If not, go check that out. So today I'm actually going to be going over the Metrolink's capital up capital projects update. Um, there's going to be another Metrolink's uh, public board meeting uh, in the next week. Uh, so I'll put links to that as well as this slideshow and the capital projects update report all in the description. So go take a look at that. But uh, without further ado, let's begin. So I'm going to be giving the, an overview as well as uh, some predictions, etc. Now, this is just a reminder that I'm not associated with Metrolinx or any other government agencies, just to get that out there <laughs> right away. So some requisite knowledge as well. So we have RFQ, which is request, request for Qualifications. This is when teams apply to be qualified to make a bid on a project. We have Request for Proposals. This is when teams actually present bids and eventually a bid is chosen when the RFP closes. Um, and then we have DBFOM, and what that is is a design, build, finance, operate, and maintain. That's actually a procurement model, so basically how a project is completed. Um, in this case, it literally means that the, the project bidder or team designs the project, constructs the project, manages the financing of the project, and then operates and maintains the project for some set period of time, uh, often something like 30 years. So. That's the model that something like the Eglinton Crosstown will be using. So let's get uh, started with those LRTs. So for the Eglinton Crosstown, uh, we have uh, the operations and maintenance facility is now nearing completion. The first vehicle will be coming later in the year. All the underground stations are under construction. Major fit-outs have begun. We have beginning work on the elevated guideway in the west uh, around Black Creek Drive. Uh, the tunnels are starting to be fitted out with that operational infrastructure, such as the duct banks and track bits. Duct banks actually carry things like signaling cables, power, etc. Uh, we're also seeing some accurate uh, utility uh, relocations on Eglinton East uh, for the kind of uh, above ground sections of the line, uh, and some minor construction ongoing, as well as some pile driving at uh, Kennedy Station, as well as beginning works for construction of the kind of expansion of that station. As well, the lawsuit from Crosslinks. Uh, to Metro Links that seems to have been settled, and so opening is still set for 2021, which is quite positive. I've also included likelihood for cancellation figures uh, with the new Ontario PC government. Um, of course, the pre previous uh, Mike Herrick's PC government was famous for cancelling the Eglantine subway and literally filling it in. However, I think transit uh, projects are kind of more universally recognized as important now, so I don't think we'll see anything that crazy. Uh, but still, I do think it's possible some projects get cancelled. Um, in this case, I think it's, it's very unlikely that the Eglantine Crosstown LRT would be cancelled because it's, it's it's so deep into construction. Uh, next, we have the Finch West LRT. Um, the project has reached financial close some time ago in, I think, May, uh, with Mosaic Transit Group. That's a consortium that will be constructing it. Uh, preliminary engineering work is kind of winding down now, and uh, kind of early construction has already begun uh, with some utility relocations, etc. Uh, the likelihood of cancellation for this is, is, is higher because uh, some politicians, actually, particularly Giorgio Manoliti, have been trying to push <laughs> for this project to be cancelled. I think it's quite unlikely now because there would be quite an uh, extensive cost since, as I said, financial close has already happened. Next, we have uh, the Mississauga Brampton, your Ontario LRT. So the RFP is out right now. Uh, some significant utility relocations are already happening uh, on your Ontario. Uh, there are separate projects going on at the GO stations, uh, Port Credit and Cooksville, is which uh, this LRT actually uh, interchanges with. Uh, it's also a slightly more likely to be cancelled since, of course, that RFP hasn't closed. However, there's been some support from local PC and PPs, so I actually think that's quite likely, unlikely. Um, we also heard kind of public support for this, surprisingly, considering how uh, anti-LRT Doug Ford is. Next, we have the Hamilton LRT. As you can see, RFP is also out right now. Uh, planning for some utility relocations is also underway. Uh, this project, I've actually put a slightly higher likelihood of cancellation. All of them quite low. This is only 15%. Um, but uh, because it has actually still uh, come under fire from some community members uh, and some candidates for municipal politics. So 
that's why I've included that uh, slightly higher likelihood of uh, cancellation. Okay, so now it does some interesting ghost stuff. Uh, so we have the regional express rail station works, basically. Uh, I kind of consider all station works to be regional express rail station works because uh, most of the station works are happening on one of the five RER lines, the two non-RER lines being the Richmond Hill line and the Milton line. Um, but as you can see, there's 17 stations right now uh, that are just kind of uh, in progress with some sort of upgrades. So here's a lightning round of all those stations. Okay, so we have Cooksville, new parking garage, new station building, new bus facilities, construction is underway. We have Kipling, major new bus terminal, new station building, construction is also underway. We have Rutherford, new parking garage, renovated station, new bus loop, grade separation at Rutherford Road, Pedest a new pedestrian bridge, the FP is closed for that. We have Agincourt, uh, there's a new station building there being, uh, being planned, uh, platform canopies at full length, uh, and some just general improved facilities. Utility and early works are already underway for that. The RFP has been issued and everything, uh, I mean, has been closed. Uh, it, and uh, that construction is already underway as of September, which is right now. Uh, Milliken, new station building, platform canopies, better facilities, same thing as Agincourt, already, already going. Unionville, same as the last two, new station building, platform canopies, better facilities, and uh, all going along with those other two still aligned stations. We also have some improvements to Milton Station. Uh, the RFP is out for that right now. We have Meadowvale. That's in the same package as Milton, and so the RFP is also out for that right now for some general infrastructure improvements. Uh, we have Downsview Park. A second platform is going to be finally fit out, because right now there are two platforms, but there's only one track going through the station, and the second platform actually isn't fit out for proper uh, go service. So the RFP for that will be out in about a month. Uh, Brownlee. We have uh, a new parking garage being built, uh, as well as a rearranged platform to the island platform. Uh, the construction on that is underway as we speak. East Gwillenbury, we have a parking expansion. Construction is also underway right now. That's on the ferry line. We have Danforth on the Lakeshore East, the station rehabilitation. The RF2 for that is out right now. We have Pickering, which is a pedestrian bridge. That very iconic and famously maligned pedestrian bridge. It's taken them years and years and years, but Cladding is almost done, so that bridge should be should be done soon. I actually think it's a very iconic bridge over the 401, and it's really cool looking. So it's sad that the project has been you know going through so many issues, but it's good to hear that this is almost done. Uh, at Rochelle, we have a new station building, new pedestrian tunnel, station modifications, and really exciting electrification enabling works. Um, I'm kind of pointing out wherever we I see something that. Kind of points to electrification happening in the future. Design for that's underway currently. We have Richmond Hill, that's a station rehabilitation. Construction's going to begin later this year at some point. Uh, for Lincolnville, they're uh, they're actually relocating the station south of Bethesda Road. Um, design for that's underway. Okay, <laughs> so there's a lightning round. Hope that was good. Um, so we have seven new stations uh, Bloomington, East Harbor, Finch Kennedy, Gerard Carlaw, Lawrence Kennedy, St. Clair Old Weston, King Liberty, and most of these are RER stations. Uh, Bloomington, though, is um, going to be on the Richmond Hill line. It's quite a big, cool, interesting arcade with an integrated canopy station. Should be interesting. Um, kind of still extending the Richmond Hill line, because, you know, why not? <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, there's obviously there's the Bowmanville extension and Niagara, but we didn't actually hear any real updates on those <laughs> this quarter in the capital report, so I haven't included those here. Um, yeah, so for Bloomington, apparently foundation is substantially complete, so construction on that's ongoing. It should be kind of coming along next year, year and a half, so that's really awesome. Um, for the new Toronto stations, the RFQs closed during the summer, and the RFPs are planning to be issued later this year, so it's good to see those rolling along. I actually think that those are probably the most interesting new ghost stations, especially something like East Harbor, which is going to link up with the relief line and streetcars. It's, it's actually in that way, it's quite similar to Dundas West, because that station also links up to streetcars and a subway line and kind of go services. So that's really cool. At Union Station, there's like tons of work going on. So we have the Concourse building improvements, which are, of course, super, super delayed. However, um, the moats have been being covered, so that's quite nice. It's nice to see that happening. Uh, uh, it's all in construction, obviously. The self-platforming concourse, so the widening of the self-platform often used by the lakeshore lines, and also I believe that that may include uh, level boarding, so that would be really interesting. 
Uh, the RFP for that is closing later this year. We also have the Enabling Works uh, track project. So they're kind of taking two tracks out of service at a time until summer 2019. Construction on that's ongoing. We have the East Track Enhancement Project. The EA uh, closed for that in mid-August. So I guess we'll be seeing probably an RQ, RP in the future, maybe by the end of the year. Uh, it's just, uh, just uh, I guess, uh, wishful thinking. Uh, also, this is quite interesting. The new Union Station bus terminal, actually, I didn't realize construction had already begun on that. Uh, it's part of that uh, large new CIBC uh, kind of uh, uh, development that's going in there, the new t new uh, towers for CIBC. So that's that's quite interesting to me. Um, substantial global completion is expected by the end of the year. So perhaps we'll be seeing that come online even sooner. Now, I'm not sure if it's been organized yet to move all the bus services from the current coach terminal that's around uh, around the Eden Center, Dundas Street. But uh, who knows, maybe we'll hear more about that shortly. So then on to general infrastructure work. So not particularly related to stations, mostly track infrastructure, grade separations, that type of thing. Uh, we have the Davenport Diamond grade separation. Super interesting, of course, separating the Barry Line and the CB Main Line. Now, this is currently like the main thing blocking really frequent service on, on the Barry Line because uh, double tracking is kind of ongoing in the northern area of the Barry Line. There's a lot of great separations too. So this kind of single track section where there's constant interference is an issue. Um, so it's currently an RFP and that RFP should be closing quite soon. So we'll probably hear more about this shortly. We also have the Lakeshore East, East Corridor project, which is going to be uh, adding a third track and some bridge and corridor expansions for that third track. Uh, the RPLs right now, but uh, it's closing in October. Um, we have the central corridor for the Lake Shore East. Uh, that includes several grade separations and a new track and improved drainage for that new track. Uh, the RP was issued in April. It should be closing soon. Then we have the Lake Shore East West corridor project, which is some bridge and corridor expansions as well. But this is for planning to accommodate a fourth track to Scarborough Junction, uh, where the Stovian line and uh, Lakeshore East line kind of separate. So this is actually a really important piece to increasing frequency on the Scoville Bill line, because uh, once we have this, then uh, we just have to deal with Scarborough Junction, and then we'll be able to have, you know, probably very frequent up to 15 minute service on the Stovian line. That'll be really cool. So the RFQ was issued in February, and it should be closing quite soon. We have the Lakeshore West infrastructure improvements. So that's five station rehabs, two new grade separations, and a pedestrian bridge replacement. Uh, we're getting to a point where the Lakeshore lines have almost no grades, uh, like grade crossings anymore. So that's really awesome. Uh, the RFP was issued in April. It's closing soon. We have the 401 tunnel. So that's the new about 200 meter twin tunnel, designed 60% complete, and uh, some preliminary construction and staging has already actually begun. Right? She was driving by on the 401 just about a week ago and saw some of the construction equipment kind of uh, getting prepared there. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, and then we have the Stoville line grade separations. Uh, Rutherford Road comes to mind. Uh, design work's underway for that right now and uh, financial close uh, has already happened. So early construction is commencing. And then we have the Whippy Rail maintenance facility. So it's complete, actually. It's being integrated into active service. Some trains are operating out of there. Was actually creating some issues uh, this week uh, because trains have to kind of go back to Oshawa before they go west towards the Union. So it has been creating some issues, but once that gets fully rolling, that'll be really great because the fleet is, is too too large to be handled by current facilities already. Um, some people have actually noted that there are catenary foundations already in place at the East Rail Maintenance Facility or the Whitby Rail Maintenance Facility, as it's going to be called now. Um, and so that's really interesting. Again, electrification infrastructure is already being put in. Now, track expansion. Double tracking on Stillville and Barry Lines is uh, ongoing, and there's been lots of updates on forums, etc. about that, and uh, it's good to see. It means that once we get the Davenport Diamond and Scarborough Junction kind of sorted out, so that should be in the next kind of two years, I'm, I'm thinking, then we'll be able to see, start seeing quite frequent uh, at least every 30 minute service being introduced onto those lines. However, we're going to need probably some some more rolling stock before we're able to do all of that. And then uh, we also have the Network Operations Center. That's in Oakville. Uh, this project is part of moving, uh, actually controlling the GO system to Metrolinx. Um, 
substantial completion was reached in May, uh, and it's going to begin taking over some operations. So one would imagine that Go will have, have slightly better uh, management of their operations now that they're actually managing it internal, which is quite cool. And then finally, a mother of all DB, DBFOMs update. Now, if you're wondering what this is, um, it's kind of a term coined by some people on the Urban Toronto forums. Um, what this basically is, is um, the, the DBFOM package, like a project that's related to electrification, resignaling, um, upgrading some stations, um, and buying new rolling stock. So like the super interesting RER turning go into a subway slash regional rail system package. Um, it's actually been delayed uh, for the RFQ closing until mid-October. However, this is a really interesting project. Um, uh, last time I checked the pre-RFQ, like the qualified, uh, some of the qualified teams include things like SNCF, MTR, um, uh, Deutsche Bahn, uh, really interesting <laughs> companies that are interested in working on this project, RATP, so that's the Paris Rail Operator. So all of this is uh, super interesting, super encouraging. Um, there's also that early works electrification stuff kind of happening here and there across the network. So all of this is really encouraging and, and we'll see what happens at the board meeting. But anyways, guys, that's been the kind of quarterly uh, capital projects update for Metrolinks. Um, let me know what, what you guys think. Uh, I might be able to start doing these every quarter. Uh, but nonetheless, I will have the documents down in the description. Uh, enjoy. Thanks, guys.